All right, welcome to GUI and in web browsers. It's 15th of January 2020. I want to say welcome to 20s because I've been told that's a problematic issue when a decade starts or ends. Uh, yeah, people have uh, like arguments about that on the internet. <laughs> so uh, uh, this week is a bit shorter on the agenda, but still we got some topics to discuss. Uh, first one uh, is end -to -end, short update on end-to-end -end tests. I synced with Hugo yesterday on the JSAPFS PR, and it seems there are uh, bugs in uh, the existing CI setup. So Hugo is taking uh, another look. Uh, I unpack uh, the context uh, and con transfer that to him yesterday. Uh, so I moved to Go IPFS, and actually I got it working today. So I, I did not even like update this to-do list before this call. And it's still in the draft, but it's actually like, um, maybe I share. That's a good thing. I was like commenting without sharing screen. So it's probably ridiculous for people. Uh, let's see now. <laughs> uh, cold, cold, cold. No, go back. Yes. So there's a PR in Go IPFS repo to to basically add, to basically run those existing end-to-end -end tests we've got in uh, IPFS Web UI repo against the head of Go IPFS. So uh, the setup is that we we got a special like Docker image with uh, browsers. Uh, it's mostly because we run tests in real Chromium and it requires some additional libraries. And then we got like separate uh, Web UI uh, uh, task which runs in parallel with other interrupt tests so it's not like blocking or adding any time to existing test suite uh, and I've made it uh, to basically do the same thing we do in JSIPFS so we uh, we run tests uh, against original IPFS web UI repo just to see if upstream is green so if upstream is green uh, I need to, uh, I got uh, like a fix for this, but like if upstream is green, uh, then we continue and we switch to uh, IP, Go IPFS binary built from the local repo. So that means we will not break Go IPFS build if upstream uh, IPFS web UI is broken for some reason. However, if upstream is green and then if we switch to log to this uh, developer version of Go IPFS and that one breaks, that means we've got a regression. Um, and that's basically it. There are like cool uh, caching uh, solutions provided by uh, Circus AI. So it's pretty fast. And actually I've, I've run it, uh, I've run it here and it runs like under seven minutes or something. Uh, and you can see like, it runs here, uh, it runs a uh, unit test, it builds web UI, and then run it using uh, the stable production version, which is right now it's 0 for 22. It's all green. And then we run test it again, but this time we run it against uh, this specific commit from this specific branch for which entire uh, tests were executed. Uh, so it's the same thing that we will have uh, for JS IPFS, and probably it will land like this week, depending on fixes provided by Hugo for JS, because I don't want to like open too many PRs, so we'll probably just merge all the fixes for both. Uh, I think that's it for the end-to-end -end test. Uh, the cool thing is that uh, we we found some bugs in existing setup, so we are hardening uh, our CI. And I like um, I like the fact that in Go IPFS I did some timing, and interrupt tests take like a 15 minutes or more, maybe probably more. I I think it was running for 15 minutes at least. Uh, so those end-to-end uh, -end tests in the web UI take only, I think, I believe six minutes or seven mm -hmm. now that we run them twice. Um, so we don't add any additional time to go IPFS uh, tests, 
which probably means uh, no one will be angry for us for like adding this to to CI setup. Um, I mean, I think but, we'd want to take it anyway, yeah. even if it did add time. But but it makes like it's so much easier. <laughs> yeah, and cool thing is that we are like forbidding people from creating. Uh, when they initialize IPFS repo, they, uh, it's impossible to initialize repo with uh, small key sizes now. So you are not able to like use uh, like uh, 1K, um, yeah, like uh, 1024 bits. Uh, you need to have at least like 2000 uh, bit uh, keys. And in uh, CI, we, we use a special variable to lift uh, that limitation just so the test runs faster. Uh, but it took some time to figure it out why it does not work. <laughs> Probably should ask someone, but well, it's more fun if you figure it out on your own. Um, all right, I think uh, Dietrich got some. Uh, yeah, I had, I had a quick qu question though. Um, yep. So, kind of, what's the what's the this, so that then the Go IPFS side you're still waiting? It's not actually landed in P in CI yet. And you need to be able to get approval from someone before that lands. Oh yeah, so like in both JS and Go, those PRs are still in a draft state, and uh, I just want to flip them both uh, when I merge all the fixes upstream, because we had well, like we fixed some things in like Azure, IPFS D control, uh, Web UI itself. It's like now like self server on random ports, so you can run multiple ones on the same hardware and stuff like that. So uh, it's just a matter of uh, merging upstream stuff and then flipping those PRs uh, and asking like Steven in Go IPFS probably and Alan or Alex uh, and Hugo on JS side. Um, but yeah, it, it generally works. Uh, it's just a matter of like fixing some bugs in outside of web UI and outside of uh, actual uh, code we've added. Um, All right. Br yep. The, the next next issue that I, I we talked about doing a brave post uh, kind of like a, a more technical dive something that's brave specific acknowledges braves 1.0 acknowledges the what IPFS work shipped in that release um, and I think that that's great if we can get that out before the end of the month and we also have that kind of set up before East Denver of a thing to point out and talk about um, there so I wonder I, I was thinking maybe for this what if we schedule an hour next week where we co-work on it together and we see if we're just being in a zoom room for an hour see if we can push out a blog post that way yeah sounds good we could even uh i i wonder if it would be useful to sort of like prepare an outline uh beforehand so yeah I, I, absolutely yeah if, and then we like, can spend, I, I, that, just, spend just that time polishing time. and filling in the details yeah, uh, pick any time that works for you, and I'll try to and like maybe create hackpads uh, beforehand, and I'll yeah. do my best to like do outline before, so we have some like starting point without staring on the blank screen. Okay. Yeah, I had some like notes around uh, for this, but it's like uh, yeah, and then distraction machine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna add that. Find my right. Uh, the next item is also me, and this is just more like keeping people apprised of you know ideas that we had and uh, the Egalia. So this is oh, I wanted to add one more item to that. Um, like, uh, Galia does a, a work for a long time doing native implementations of technologies for web browsers, implementing web standards. Um, and we, I approached them in December around just have an early conversation with what native implementation in Chromium would look like. Uh, they're super experienced, long and in, long involved in standardization and had landed major, major things like CSS grid. Uh, they're really committed to open source, uh, the open web as a platform and very experienced in landing code in browser vendor repositories. So they're part of browser vendor teams. Uh, they have commit access to the different repositories. So when we met in December, I basically gave them kind of like an intro into just 30 minutes.
doing, uh, the background of PL, how, where we're coming from in terms of op op open source uh, by default and kind of the values of the organization and a quick you know, look at IPFS and technologies and a kind of a review of the work that we've done so far in working with browser vendors. And um, I think we're gonna meet again and kind of intro into kind of how Agalia works and uh, how, what their approaches are, how they evaluate projects to take on uh, but it, it was pretty exciting uh, opportunity and really just one of those things that probably, you know, we're early, early days, but just having conversations and seeing what's possible um, it, in terms of the browser integration in the long term, it, native Chromium integration gives us a lot of uh, abilities to be able to speak to people shipping Chromium based browsers and make that choice for them easier uh, have for them to be able to share the resources and that we've put into a shared implementation for Chromium. Uh, and the conversation and implementation are really different for, say, uh, WebKit or Gecko. So the, the idea of Chromium First supports the two partners that we've already been working really closely with, Brave and Opera, uh, in, in, a, in a positive way. Uh, it also makes that a po possible choice if, if Microsoft, as they're now, I think they're about to launch the, the Edge Chromium as their default browsers pretty soon. So it makes the conversation for them if they enter crypto space and more, and more strongly or want to be able to add these types of features to their browser uh, to support kind of the identity work. I know that they're, like their ION project uses IPFS by default. Uh, so this, this might be something that would be in their interest as well. So there's really a lot, of, a, a lot of birds with one stone if we take that approach first uh, and then you know, conversations with other browser vendors as, as, as usual, still ongoing, but it, interesting opportunity and worth, worth highlighting there. Uh, and then just also the quick update on the, on the uh, browser design guidelines. Uh, thanks, Lytle, for doing a, a massive pass on it. Uh, Jim is going to integrate your comments. I haven't looked at all of them in detail, but I think that the, the goal is to have this pretty much closed up by next, next week. The, uh, I'm going to present it at IPFS Weekly on like, what is it, the 24th or something like that. So um, yeah, we'll do all the final polish. Uh, we've already started talking about a second follow along project, which is IPFS mobile design guidelines. This would not be limited to browsers specifically, but would include browsers and web uh, flows, uh, especially as like, let's say if you're on a, if you're on a mobile device that has an IPFS protocol handler or a share handler of some kind, or somebody registers to build it be a handler for those types of URLs, kind of what those flows would look like, uh, patterns for uh, spinning up and down uh, transient demons on device, uh, what the you know, UX and interaction patterns for when you're an IPFS client only, say only using HTTP API or not actually running a full node daemon, but even running a, a you know, lighter, lighter IPFS light as we've seen both in the birdie work, the textile work um, and, there, and three box, all looking at like various various levels of what a node looks like in a mobile app, uh, both in and out of browser context. Uh, for those native apps, do they do, should they register as an IPFS protocol handler on the OS? Like uh, there's all these questions that need to be figured out on mobile that of which like mobile browser is a subset, an important subset, but, but part of. Um, so there's some, and probably follow along work that's gonna happen after, after this completes. But wanted to give an update there. Uh, and I, I think those were the only things that I had on the agenda. You're muted. <laughs> I can now, now. I need to like fake uh, <laughs> the same reaction, uh, honest, candid reaction. No, I was like saying that I'm I'm really uh, stoked about having like those browser designs, uh, especially like I really like how uh, scoped those are. Uh, and it, it's uh, probably a good approach to like better produce uh, multiple, but like sp very specific scoped uh, documents and uh, design guidelines um, than like one huge uh, body of work. Um, yeah, we, we want to make it as easy as possible for, for browser vendors, for design teams and security teams and the people doing evaluation of security UI in browsers to be able to understand what the, w how much of the browser surface area that it affects, how much of user actions will be impacted and where that matters. And ultimately for the way that desktop browsers are designed today, that really is as, na as narrow as possibly, as, as you know, closely down to what a user can actually do and, and that's really the URL bar today. Yep. Uh, 
I have uh, something that's not on the agenda, but I thought it's a fun topic to end. <laughs> and that's a uh, review process on Chrome Web Store. <laughs> Turns out we got uh, updated to uh, 2.10 in December. And I was uh, sort of like tracking um, how long it takes uh, for, uh, so there's like an issue about why we are in permanent in-depth review on Chrome Web Store. So every time we publish, uh, we the pub new version is not immediately available to all our users. Instead, it takes time for it to be reviewed. And that's basically because we ask for some like, uh, in, like broad permissions, but those permissions are critical for uh, IPFS Companion doing what it does. So uh, basically identifying IPFS resources on the web and giving user uh, context actions, but and also uh, giving a, a, a possibility of redirecting that to locally running nodes. Um, so historically, we it always took multiple days, but for some time it looked so it was suspicious. It always took seven days, and it was the same, I believe, uh, in the last case. So I start to suspect there's simply like a manual delay had coded somewhere because every time it takes seven days before a new version is published and it's both for our stable channel this one is uh, the stable channel we also have a beta channel and it's the same there which is kind of a bummer because it makes it impossible for people to try like quick we we, we cannot like quickly iterate and publish new versions um we cannot even like overwrite uh, already published version with the new one. So if we found a, find a bug and we want to publish a fixed version, that's not possible until the old version is reviewed. Um, so that's the update. But we are published, like the latest version is published, which is cool. It's the version when we moved uh, uh, file imports to MFS. So you can see your files in web UI's files. And that's it. Um, I believe we are at the end of the agenda. So, I mean, there, there is something to celebrate there in that there is a new version of IPFS Companion available. Yeah. Chrome if Web you Store. are like a Chromium user, it's time to update. Or maybe you, you've updated already and you right. don't even know. But your updates will be fewer and farther between. And that is not, not due to us. Yep. I, I believe it won't improve unless we create a, a dedicated version for uh, for Chromium. Uh, for Google Chrome, basically, that is using manifest v3. Uh, but that's, that's like a separate topic, and it's uh, not even available in a stable channel. Um, there's like a early preview in uh, Canary. But not all APIs are there, and it's hard to tell how the final version will look like. So. Time will tell. All right. I believe that's it for this week. Any last words? Dietrich? No? Good stuff. Happy January. Stay warm. Yep. All right. See you next week. <laughs>